You have some guy from the Philippines who's never seen anything that fast. And so he winds up calling traveling four times and stuff like that. Greetings and salutations and welcome to the Odd Coaches podcast available on YouTube, Spotify, Podbeam, iHeart, or wherever you get your podcast. I am your host, Dr. Keith Adams, and with me today are our cavalcade of stars, starting with my favorite team leader, Mike King. Mike, how you doing today? Doing well, and what a week till football. <laughs> Thank you on our basketball show, but I love that because there's one week till football. Our favorite administrator is with us today, Robert Abney. Robert, how are you, sir? Living the dream every day, man. Got just uh, enjoying the weekend. All right. And uh, the, the Hall of Famer himself, following Campbell, following. Thank you for joining us today. How are you? Hey, no problem, man. Happy to be here, man. Let's uh, let's talk about some basketball, baby, during you know, but one week before football season. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. We live in both worlds. All right, so on today's episode, we have FIBA World Cup news, and that's one of the reasons why I made sure following uh, fit us in his schedule, understanding international play. We're going to talk about the return of Ben Simmons. So White King will keep me from being cynical, and we'll do WNBA news and notes. But first, FIBA Basketball World Cup update. Team USA. Team USA has made it to the quarterfinals. That will take place soon. Team USA's weakness is unquestionably its lack of size, and that might prevent us from winning a gold medal. Following, have you had a chance to see Team USA play in the FIBA World Cup yet? Yes, I have. What do you think about our chances to win gold, or is that lack of size going to really hurt us? Um, it's not even just lack of size. It's lack of shooting as well. Um, <laughs> I mean, the guys don't shoot well from from the perimeter. Um, I think that's going to be a problem. Actually, I, I was actually just watching the game against Lithuania this morning, um, and they're still they're struggling against size. I mean, any team with size is going to be a problem with them, and they're clogging up the lane. Saw the game against Germany. They did the same thing. They got size. It clogged up the lane. It was it was a struggle. All right. So, Robert, I haven't heard much about the officiating. Grateful for that. But, again, Team USA, really, I don't think, constructed an international kind of team. What are your thoughts on that, Robert? I, I know that when that that's – always some sports writer always brings up the officiating when you talk about NBA players going and playing FIBA rules because the rules are different. And, you know, you have, you have these guys with the, you know, their quick, you know, quick spin moves and stuff like that. And you have some guy from the Philippines who's never seen anything that fast. And so he winds up calling traveling four times and stuff like that. I haven't heard anything about anything like that this year. So that, that's a good thing. Um, uh, again, I know, I know that there are a uh, couple of NBA non-staff officials and one guy who's an NBA staff official on there. And I've seen a little bit about them working and having a good time. So I, I haven't heard anything about the officiating, um, just to follow up on what, on what follower and said about, you know, team USA. I mean, just, you know, you, you have to have, people who can shoot, not just score, shoot. you got to have shooters in international play. And if you don't have guys who are going to consistently knock down shots, you're going to be in trouble, especially if you don't have a lot of size and can't get the ball down in the paint anyway. You know, it, it's – the gold medal – doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things because the world cup is a qualifying tournament for the Olympics. And you worry more about that. And they qualified, which is, which was the goal, I guess. Um, but I I'd be surprised if they win. So those are my thoughts. All right. So Mike, you're the regular fan. Has the FIBA basketball world cup caught your interest enough that you're actually going to turn a game on and see what's going on. Not really. I checked the box scores. They're playing right now. It's not going well. I uh, looked at the roster. The oldest person's 28. And for me, when I think of like USA basketball, you think of Kobe charging and you know, running over his teammate on the first play, 
And you think of, uh, you know, the dream teams when they were competing with themselves, they had, they wanted to win so bad because they, they wanted to beat themselves because they knew that was where the talent was. And I'm looking at this roster and who's that guy? Who's, who's the guy who's so uber competitive that they're going to make sure that I don't care who we're playing. I don't care if we can't shoot or do this or that. We're better. I, I don't see a guy there. Everyone's 20, a couple 27s, 28s. I mean, it's, and that's why I have you here. To do it. <laughs> that's why I have you here. All right. So let's talk about some feel good stories about the FIBA World Cup. South Sudan. Uh, South Sudan earned the African nation's first Olympic bid in any sport. Uh, and they did so understand. And, and if you understand history, you understand that there's been a bloody civil war. Uh, and for them to put together a team led by former NBA star Luau Dang, who took over the program, which he largely funded. Uh, he recruited players with South Sudanese heritage. Uh, I'm just very excited for them. Uh, following, I don't know if you followed the fact that South Sudan earned its first bid. Uh, have you? Has that come across your radar? Any thoughts on that? No, I mean, um, that's a big deal. Um, I haven't been watching it, but um, I mean, usually it's uh, Angola, you know, who usually wins or, you know, Nigeria. Um, even uh, so, yeah, South Sudan getting that win is, is, is big for them. You know what I mean? I know the country's going wild um, and I'm happy for them. All right. So I want to talk about Angola. So thank you for the segue. Angola's <laughs> men's basketball coach uh, is not a fan of countries who play a bunch of naturalized players. Uh, they lost to the Dominican Republic in part because they have a team primarily of Angolan players. And other teams, such as the D Dominican Republic, have players who have naturalization. Um, Dominican Republic has no naturalized players, but has six players who were born outside the country, including NBA star Carl Anthony Towns. FIBA allows one naturalized player per country. Since citizenship laws vary, it's easier for some countries to naturalize as many players as others. Following, as somebody who's played in Europe, can can you speak about that policy a little bit and educate our audience? Um, that's a big deal. Um, obviously, they want their naturalized players, who basically players who were born in their country. Um, I'm Nigerian. Uh, both my parents are Nigerian. I was born in the States. And I tried out for the Nigerian national team back, I want to say, in 2012. Um, and that's when I realized that rule was in effect. You know what I mean? Like, I went there. You know what I mean? I tried out. Um, and then they said, look, we can only have, you know, two two guys who are not naturally born, you know, in Nigeria. And it just happened to be uh, two other NBA guys. <laughs> That they, they they picked up, you know what I mean. So I was like, oh, well, all right, cool. I have no chance, but I get it though. You know what I mean. So I get it. They want to have their naturalized players playing for their, their national team. Um, so I'm not mad at the rule. I understand it. But again, it's other it's other countries who pay, you know, pay players to get a citizenship. You know what I mean. So that's also an issue too. So it's like they might not even be from that country, but they have the passport. They pay for it, or because they're playing in that country. They were able to get that passport from a coach or something like that. So that's when it starts getting tricky. You know what I mean? Like you got Americans who have, you know, a, a Ivory Coast passport. And it's like you, you you don't have any like ties to like none of your parents or, you know, grandparents are from Ivory Coast. So that's when it starts to become an issue. Okay. All right. Well said. So, so Robert, I, I want to come to you because Noah Lyles, who is the fastest man in the world at this moment, a track athlete from the Washington area. He went to uh, Alexandria City High School, if I'm not mistaken, uh, has caused a stir. Uh, and I need my administrator to kind of guide this conversation. So help us not go off the rails. He He's irked some, some of NBA's biggest stars by questioning why basketball players call themselves world champions after winning the NBA Finals. So Noah Lyles won the 100-meter and 200-meter world title at the World Athletic Championships 
becoming the first man to win a sprint double since Usain Bolt did it in 2015. And when speaking to reporters uh, in Budapest, Hungary, Lyles said to paraphrase, world champion of what? The United States? Don't get me wrong. I love the U.S. at times, but it ain't the world. We are the world, referring to the world athletes at the track championships. We have almost every country out here fighting. You had NBA players clapping back like Kevin Durant. Might need to monitor his social media. He said, somebody help this brother on Instagram. Draymond Green said, when being smart goes wrong with a face palm emoji. The truth is kind of somewhere in the middle because the NBA does have international players, but it's the National Basketball Association. So help us out, Robert. What do you, what do you think about Noah Lyles' comments before I get to the rest of the panel? Uh, first of all, I think that should have stayed an inside voice rather than been an outside voice. <laughs> um, you, you know what? He won the 100 and 200 world cha- world titles. He's yes, the he did. man in the world. You know what? If he wants to say that, let him say that. I don't. It doesn't make any difference. I mean, it doesn't make any difference to me. At some point, we as, you know, American sports culture decided that we were going to call, you know, whoever won the professional sports leagues, we were going to call them world champions. We decided that at some point. And is it entirely accurate? I I don't know. I mean, you know, in the NBA, you have players from all over the world playing in the NBA. So if if anybody can call themselves world champions, I would say I would submit that the NBA is probably more maybe Major League Baseball. I don't know. But in, in any case, that that's one of those things that they just needed something to talk about. So they decided they were going to stir it up on social media. I I don't care. It doesn't make any difference to me. He's the fastest man in the world. You know what? He he can he can he already walked his walk. Let him talk a little bit. Okay. All right, Mike, you're my social I studies teacher. Go right ahead and take us into the classroom, Mr. King. So we started off by talking about a world basketball tournament, right? Yeah. Kevin Durant. Is Kevin Durant playing? Uh no, I do not believe he is on the Kevin rock. Durant can stop getting offended about every single thing that anything says anyone says anywhere. The guy is the softest superstar the world's ever seen. Jeez. It's the jeez. Like everything. He's just always offended. And he's probably gonna make another fake social fake account and start tweeting about it. Listen, we have world events and we don't we don't play in them and then we lose them. <laughs> then the other teams are the better in the world. The NBA, it always bothered me. Like you win the Super Bowl, you're the world champ. You're the NFL champ. There's no world events. Are the best players in the world in the NBA? Yes. Are the best players in the world in the NFL and in the, in the, in all the leagues? Yes. But it's not the, the world. It's not like a, a world to me is country versus country. And I think that's what, I think that's what um, this no person was, no allows was trying to say. Uh, <laughs> but like, come on. All right, following you have the final word in this segment. You're the actual international basketball player. <laughs> Go ahead, buddy. <laughs> it, it, it's interesting, man. Like he he's not he's not wrong, but he's not right. You know what I mean? If that makes sense, because I understand the argument on both sides, and. From playing in Europe, when you get when you win a, 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 a Greek national cha- uh, championship, you're the Greek champion. They call you a Greek champion. If you win an Italian championship, they call you an Italian champion. They don't call you, you know, the world champion. When you win an NBA championship, they call you a world champion. You know, NBA NBA title world champion. So, but I get that the NBA is the biggest league in the world. You know what I mean, basketball wise. That you have Euro League. And you also even your league when you win. So that and that's why it's like, I right, look, we have the Greek championship, you have a Spanish champion, then you have a Italian champion, champion, and then you have the best teams in the in, in Europe playing in Euro League. And Euro League is now, now you're the Euro, you're a Euro champion. But again, it's like even if you're in the Euro, Euro League, the NBA league is still better than Euro League. 
But I get what Noah's saying. It's like, look, this is not like you have countries playing against each other and not states. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then World Cup. So this is where you actually, you know, are competing for the world championship. You know what I mean? But then in the NBA, I get what they're saying. It's like, well, we have the best players in Europe and any continent on this playing in the NBA. You know what I mean? So I get the argument for both sides. Um, and, it's, and it's a debate. You know what I mean? You can say what you want. Um, I would lean more so towards, you know, obviously the world, like the world champion is obviously, you know, teams playing for their own country and like the Olympics. You know what I mean? But hey, we're the States, we're America. We do what we want now. <laughs> All right. So with that, fans, in segment two, we're going to return to the time of Ben Simmons being back as an active player, talk about his recovery from injury, and uh, maybe make some predictions on him. We'll be right back on the iCoach's podcast. The CKA SAVE Project is an industry leader in advocating for student-athlete, academic, and athletic needs. Through academic and athletic enrichment, the CKA SAVE Project is on the forefront of the issues facing 21st century student-athletes. As student-athletes continue to struggle to find a better balance between academic and athletic success, the CKA SAVE Project offers academic and athletic services to support student-athlete academic success, including academic skills assessment, academic and athletic consulting, academic monitoring, academic and athletic workshops. For more information or to schedule a free consultation, contact Dr. Keith Adams by email at cka at cka.saveproject.org. Welcome back to the Young Coaches Podcast. And in segment two, we're going to talk about the rebuilding of Ben Simmons. Anscape did this great article, and if you want to check it out, go to ESPN. But let me give you Ben Simmons' resume before we begin this conversation. Ben Simmons was the number one pick in the 2016 NBA draft. Can't take that away. He was the 2018 Rookie of the Year. He's a three-time All-Star and a 2020 All-NBA selection, two-time All-Defensive Team pick, and he's only 27 years old. Now, recently, he's had back injuries, a lot of ridicule, mental challenges. Just, it's been tough for him and that back injury cost him and limited him to 42 games so now he's moved his offseason home from los angeles to miami beach not a bad move uh he's been working out five days a week for at least five hours a day to get his body ready he told anscape that he not only plans to be ready for the start of the season for the nets but has a goal of returning to dominate the league again so i'm gonna start off with the fan mike you had a chance to look at the notes you've been a part of ben simmons conversations the last few years on the show can he come back and be an impact player for the nets in your opinion so he said dominate the league again and i'm trying to go back and see the first time and i'm not seeing it in the uh in the career stats i just remember when he got drafted, there was like it's the same hype we're getting now with uh, Wembyama, and it was like, could he, uh, someone this big who could, do, who could do the things he can do? It's only LeBron that can do that. Just never even close to panned out. I mean, he's not a bad player, and I think uh, because because of the hype that's come, that comes with the ridicule, he's he's had you know he's had some success. He just can't. Shooting is funny to watch. That's... All right. Robert, can Ben Simmons come back? Because, again, you've been a part of many of these conversations. And now, again, you've read the notes. Is he in the right spot to help those Nets get to the playoffs to make an impact? Well, when I look at his workout stuff, I see a lot of – I mean, first of all, it looks like he's he's putting in work. I don't think there's any question about that. Um, my question about the work he's putting in is, I mean, how much actual basketball work is he doing? Because my whole thing with Ben Simmons is it has never seemed like he likes basketball. That's been my whole thing with him. It doesn't appear that he really likes basketball. 
I mean, because this is this is a guy, and Mike already touched on it. You know, the whole thing with Ben Simmons is he can't shoot. So you he's got to be spending some time in the gym shooting. And you know, that's kind of mentioned in passing. Oh, we we'll go, we'll go back and shoot, maybe. You might want to spend a little more time than maybe on shooting because I mean he he is he's talented. He was a very good defensive player. He caused some matchup problems, but he's so limited offensively, nobody had to guard him. Mm-hmm. And that was that was really the 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 challenge for him, if I remember correctly. Okay. So following as the player. You you've seen Ben Simmons his entire career. That's funny now that you're at that age where you can say that. <laughs> can he come back and can he be an all NBA guy in your opinion? Can he come back? Yeah, he can come back. He's uh, still on contract, so he'll he'll, he'll be there. Um, will he live up to the contract? No, sir. Uh, will he be an all star? No, sir. Um, I just think he's going to be another 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 role player, um, a good role player. Um, do we expect him to score a lot? No. Do we expect if he if his back is fine? I expect him to be a good defender. He he has a length, he has a size. If his back is fine, he'll be mobile enough to move guard multiple positions. So I expect that. Um, I expect him to rebound. I expect him to, you know, create for others. Um, but that's it. Like, so he, I don't expect nothing else. So he's a jag to quote my, my boy Butch. He's just another guy. He's another guy. He, he's a nice role Him and he crickets. Ben yeah. Simmons is a jag. He's just another guy. He's just another good role player. And he's going to help those guys. Mikael Bridges. Um, can't, like, he's going to help those guys be better players. That's All it. All right. So I would be remiss if if I didn't say what my tag team partner, Coach Franchise, would say. Uh, ben Simmons is not a point guard in my my part, tag team partner's eyes. So uh, just wanted to make sure I said that. Uh, whenever we talk about Ben Simmons, so Franchise, we, we got you in the segment. And when we come back, we'll do WNBA news and notes to close out this uh, Wind Up Wednesday episode of the Iron Coaches Podcast. The high school and college academic and athletic landscape is changing. The growing number of college transfers, as well as student athletes being able to profit off the use of their name, image, and likeness has given student athletes the freedom and power to make life-changing decisions. That is why it is important for student athletes to be properly informed throughout the decision-making process. The difference between success and failure is often measured not by yards, but by inches, and even the most successful coaches and players use outside independent consultants to help improve their decision making, which improves their results. That is what the CKA Save Project would like to do for student athletes across the country, improve their academic and athletic results. Our academic and athletic consulting services assist student athletes with the college decision making process. The CKA team of former high school and college coaches can provide student athletes an independent assessment of their academic and athletic skills to assist student athletes in their college decision making process. Let the CKA team evaluate your academic and athletic ability to assist you in finding the right fit for your academic and athletic career. For more information, visit us on the web at www.ckasaveproject.org or schedule a free virtual consultation with Dr. Keith Adams by email at cka at ckasaveproject.org. Welcome back to the Odd Coaches Podcast in segment three. Top WNBA issues as told by the players. ESPN was on fire this week and had a uh, issue, uh, an article about the biggest issues in the WNBA. They surveyed 34 players from MVP candidates to reserves to rookies. And uh, I'm going to give an issue to each of you and tell me uh, your thoughts. So, Robert, I'm going to start with you. Travel changes was the number one issue for the WNBA players. 18 of 34 players surveyed mentioned travel. Uh, As you know, fans who've listened to the show, uh, they do not charter planes. They are flying commercial like everyone else, except in special circumstances. Robert, any thoughts on the fact that the, the players brought to your desk travel issues as being the number one issue that they have? 
how would you solve it if you had that power? Well, I, I mean, my my question would be, why are we not chartering planes for them? Why why are we not doing that? Um, if I remember the WNBA correctly, I mean, there's not a whole lot of stops between. <laughs> East Coast and West Coast, right? Twelve teams. Twelve teams. That's Twelve it. Twelve teams. And you got teams on the West Coast. You got teams on the East Coast. And, like, in between, you got Dallas, Phoenix, and Vegas, right? And, I mean, just – that that's rough. That is – especially since they don't play divisions, that's, that's rough travel. And I would think that they would be concerned about the product they're putting on the floor by not improving their travel. Um, but I mean, there are other, as we're going to talk about, there are other challenges as well. Okay. So I, think follow, I definitely yeah. think that's a legit complaint for sure. Oh yes. So follow it. I want you to address the salary structure. Not a lot of money in the WNBA, and you can actually, if you're an elite player, make more in college than the WNBA. Any thoughts about their sh their salary structure? Because that was one of their complaints. Um, yeah, it's a problem, man. Um, I think I heard an interview with Kelsey. You know, Kelsey Plum talked about just not obviously wanting to get paid what NBA players pay, get paid because um, obviously the the WNBA doesn't make that type of revenue, but. They want a certain percentage of their revenue. You know what I mean? Like what the NBA get, WNBA gets from TV deals or whatever deals they have. Um, and they want a certain percentage of that. And it makes sense. Right now, um, they're just not getting paid as, as, as what I mean, like if I'm in if I'm in a if I'm in NCA and I got an NIL deal, I'm getting paid more money than a lot of these players in the WNBA. Correct. Asia Wilson's and I'm not saying the all-stars, but most of them, you know what I mean? So what is my incentive to, you know, to leave? You know what I mean? So it's just, I mean, that's, that's something that WNBA has to talk about as a whole. Um, and they just got to find a way to, to, to pay these, these women more money. I mean, it's just part of that revenue share. That's all. Okay. Mike, you're my social studies teacher and security is an issue. Is the league doing enough? So in terms of them flying commercial, not having as much of the security structure as the NBA players, any thoughts to that, sir? Well, you had uh, some players being harassed, Brittany Griner at the airports and things like that. It seems like security, it's an easy fix. Just hire, it's not even that expensive. You just hire a couple more people per team to make sure that they're not dealing with uh, nonsense. So this seems like, of all the, the problems, maybe one of the easier ones to fix is throw a little bit of money at it. Some of these other ones, it's a lot of bit of money. Makes it a little harder. All right. So, Robert, I'm going back to you. Gaining popularity and increasing their presence. This has come across your desk. How would you go about increasing the popularity of the WNBA? Well, I think the cities it's in, it's very popular. The problem is, is outside of those cities, what's what's their footprint? And it's not significant, I don't think. Um, it seems to me, and, and this kind of goes into one of the other issues they're talking about, the roster expansion. I, I would think they'd be looking for expansion. I would think they'd be looking to, the, because the 12 teams they have right now have gotten to the point where, I mean, it's... It's a really good product. I mean, the level of play is really high. They're drawing well. They 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 need to they need to expand. I think that really needs to be the next step for them in in terms of trying to in trying to build build a presence. You know, you can't build your presence if you don't play in more places. Okay. And last before we get to the standings, following roster expansion. It is one of the <clears throat> hardest leagues to get in because there's 12 teams, 12 players per team, 144. So what do you think about roster expansion uh, and having more jobs for players? You've got the final word before we jump into the standard. Uh, I'm all for it. Um, I do think they need a couple more teams. Uh, I, I, we're at 14. I think they should be at, at 20. 
You know what I mean? I don't know. I'm not saying they're going to get the 20 within the next two, three years. But, I mean, if we go from 14 to 16. To uh, it's 12, sir. I'm sorry, 12? <laughs> yeah. Oh, we got Dang. a long way to 20. So, if we're going from 12 to 14 to 16, then, I mean, then. I, but we do need more roster spots. It, it's just not enough in the league. And you, you're getting good players who are getting cut. And, I mean, that's why, I mean, a lot of women are, are turning out WNBA and just waiting to go to Europe. You know what I mean? Because a lot of them are making more money in Europe. Yeah. All right. That was good stuff. Man. All right. So the WNBA standings, the aces are seven and three in their last 10, but they're number one. The Liberty are nine and one in their last 10 and they're number two. There's going to be a battle. There's going to be a battle for that number one spot. The uh, Connecticut sun are the third seed right now. And they're five and five in their last 10. The wings are four. The links are five. Both of them are five and five in their last 10. A lot of mediocrity to close the season. The uh, Atlanta Dream are six. They're four and six the last 10. The Mystics are seven right now, and they're three and seven in their last 10. The Chicago Sky are eight. Uh, They're holding that last spot, and they're four and six their last 10. The Sparks are nine. They're six and four in their last 10. The Fever is 10. They're four and six in their last 10. Stop fighting Fever. Get that number one pick. The storm is 11, 5 and 5, and the Phoenix Mercury is thrown in the tank. They're 2 and 8, the last 10. The WNBA playoffs begin September 13th with eight teams qualifying for the postseason, and the first round is a best of three miniseries. Games of the week Friday, September 8th, Atlanta travels to Washington uh, to play the Mystics. There are no games September 9th. So as we wrap up, this week in basketball. Mike, any final thoughts as we close? We got a lot of teams that could improve their lottery and what might be the best uh, WNBA draft that I can remember with multiple, multiple, multiple really top end players. Uh, what, only four teams have winning records? There are teams that are in the playoffs that if they lose just a couple more, they could give themselves a better chance at a star. That's what I'd be doing. <laughs> I'm not playing for winning or losing in the second round. Give me, if I ain't winning at all, give me uh, one of the good players. That's that's my thought. <laughs> Robert, any final thoughts as we head out this week? Hey, those that you get one of the first three picks in the draft, you you can't go wrong, man. Any of those, any of those three, it's just a matter of which one you want. Three number one picks in one draft. <laughs> Yep. Follow and save us because I think they believe in take it. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, the draft is definitely, I mean, maybe the top five, you're going to get something good. But we need to fast forward to the, to the WNBA finals. I just want to see Liberty and Aces. Like, that's, it's going to be a competitive series. And I, I, that's that's probably one I'm going to watch. I'm probably going to watch each game. All right. So uh, as we close the show, it's merch, merch alert now. Uh, we're doing a fundraiser and a portion of the proceeds go to supporting uh, student athletes in underserved high schools with finding the balance books. So if you go to www.cksafeproject.itemorder.com, you can buy some OCP as well as CKA Safe Project merch and help a great cause. So on behalf of our Cavalcade of Stars, I'm Dr. Keith Adams saying thank you for listening and or watching the I Coaches podcast, and we'll see you on the sidelines. Till next time, take care. The I Coaches podcast is sponsored by the CKA Save Project. The CKA Save Project is an industry leader in providing student-athlete academic and athletic support. From assessing student-athletes' academic and athletic skills to measuring and monitoring student-athlete academic progress to improving student-athlete time management and organizational skills, the CKA SAVE Project provides wraparound services for student-athletes from middle school through college. For more information, visit us on the web at www.ckasaveproject.org or schedule a free consultation with Dr. Keith Adams by emailing cka at ckasaveproject.org. We hope you enjoyed today's show. The Odd Coaches Podcast drops new episodes every Tuesday through Friday on most weeks. Make sure you subscribe to the Odd Coaches Podcast on Apple Music, iHeartRadio, Podbean, Spotify, and YouTube. Follow the Odd Coaches Podcast on Twitter and Instagram at Odd Coaches. Follow Dr. Adams on Twitter and Instagram at CKA Save Project. 
In addition, follow Coach Mike Francis on Twitter and Instagram at Coach Franchise, spelled Coach F-R-A-N-C-H-I-Z-E. For more information about the CKA Save Project, please visit them on the web at www.ckasaveproject.org. See you next time on the Odd Coaches Podcast.